And good afternoon on a very lovely, lazy Sunday afternoon. Now, following on from my first tutorial video, this part two will be discussing bridge officers and duty officers and how they interact with my build on the Operations Odyssey vessel. So, um, without further ado, we'll move on to all the bridge officers and duty officers. Okay, as most people know, the Operations Odyssey, as well as all the other Odysseys, has a Lieutenant Commander Universal and Ensign Universal, with a Lieutenant Tactical, a full Commander in Engineering, and Lieutenant in Science. This build also makes the ship a very versatile ship, and if you are comfortable and confident flying cruisers, you won't find a better combination than this, in my humble opinion. Although saying that I'm a former old assault cruiser pilot and uh, I still have a fondness for those. And the Regent class, which I may make a future video on, is almost as flexible as the Odyssey class but does suffer a little bit in its uh, bridge officer setup. So if we run through from tactical to engineering and then we'll run to the sciences, we'll go through the powers I use and why I use them in this particular build. In the Lieutenant Commander slot, I have an Officer Tactical Officer, and I have Fire at Will 1 with Torpedo Spray, or High Yield, sorry, 2, and Attack Pet and Omega. Reasons for this if I want to draw aggro, uh, especially if you're in particular missions that require you to draw aggro, then um, Fire at Will is your friend. Now, I know a lot of people use this. Uh, especially in PvP, you can forever see a swim of fire at wheels going on, but I tend to use it selectively, uh, very much like beam overload if you use that power as well. I tend to pick the time and place to use it rather than just continually spam it. So fire at will is a useful power, multiple targets, but those targets you don't get to pick, it's just a random base. But um, obviously if you've only got one target and you want to fire multiple shots then fire at will is your friend you're getting off more shots and if you combine that for example like I do with Nadia on inversion 3 then you basically get a resistance to power drain on all your systems and you've also got the duty officer the systems engineer if my memory serves me correctly that also has a bonus if you use DEM it basically that's direct energy modulation basically reduces the power drain on your weapon systems for up to eight seconds which is uh, very very useful especially if you're using beam overload for example or if you're just a heavy beam array person like my good self although I don't use six array arrays on this particular build I used to I used to be a six beam arrays and two torpedoes now I'm three torpedoes and um, uh, five beam arrays I'll see next one to high yield two which I use to add a bonus onto my quantum torpedoes um, again this is just to increase damage uh, useful ability this one as this ship is primarily a beams I still want to get some advantage out of my torpedoes so high yield on this particular build is more useful um, certain m missions that you might find yourself on or if you're doing the fleet actions you might find yourself with multiple grouped targets uh, you may wish to swap out high yield 2 for uh, sorry, high yield 2 for torpedo spread 2 for example if everyone's using AOE effects then that's quite a bonus that you're getting against grouped targets so as I said the ship can be swapped out for different abilities for different situations uh, depending on what I'm running if I need a AOE then I'll swap this out for a different bridge officer which has just got high yield 2 swapped out for torpedo spread 2 Finally, in the Lieutenant Commander slot is Attack Pattern Omega, which is basically a alpha attack buff, you could say. It uh, gives you a bonus to all your damage, and it gives you a bonus to damage resistance. It also gives you a flight speed turn strength increase and a flight turn rate increase, which is incredibly useful if you're flying Lozzy, as most of you know these ships don't turn the quickest. So not only is this giving me an increase in my initial attacks but it's also uh, giving me a bonus to my turn uh, if you want to turn the ship in a hurry you could p hit attack pattern omega with evasive maneuvers and you'll be surprised at how quickly this ship will turn uh, even more valuable if you use inertial dampers which we'll come on to later 
also of note now that you get immunity to movement debuffs so tractor beam is going to hold me a lot less and also uh, you get a defense increase as well so if for example I wanted to run the Aegeus set on this ship which would give me a plus 10 to defense also with attack pattern omega we're getting quite a lot of defense on a cruiser or any other vessel for that matter hmm. now moving on to the lieutenant tactical I use tactical team 1 obvious reasons really quickest way to distribute your shields though I do prefer to do, distribute my shields manually but you also get a bonus plus 18 to your energy weapon damage and your projectile weapon damage as well as the distribution of shields and you also get uh, plus 10 to your starship attack patterns so using this in combination with say for example beta or omega like I do here can actually be quite beneficial and lastly in the lieutenant slot I've got a tap pattern beta I use this one mainly to on my target it's uh, minus 25.4 to damage resistance so basically I'm reducing the target's resistance to damage uh, the cruiser spends most of its time circling a target obviously I'm going to want to use buffs that reduce the uh, target that I'm shooting at's defenses basically then moving on to the commander slot I'm running engineering team 1 obviously for hull repairs I tend not to use engineering team 1 too often because it does conflict with tactical team. I activate tactical team for a moment. You'll notice that it also takes an engineering team 1. Now I do have duty officer that he reduces the time for recharge, which I've also got one on tactical team as well. Um, so it does reduce it. I tend to use engineering team more for helping other people and I tend to rely on hazard emitters or emergency power structure integrity field 3 which uh, if you're running a high ox level increases its ability in the lieutenant slot for the engineering I've got auxiliary power to inertial dampeners basically this gives me a boost to my kinetic damage resistance so if I'm going to get hit by torpedoes, it's giving me a defense um, it also gives me a turn rate and flight speed strength increase as well so it makes the ship faster but more importantly gives me a greater turning rate as well um, for a cruiser I find this invaluable so the combination of kinetic damage and flight turn rate is very useful something also to note is you get a crewman resistance rating and basically uh, reduction in how many crew die when you take hits. Um, one of my earlier builds for an Odyssey, especially my science one, I uh, use the emergency force fields to help keep crew alive, to help with um, basically hull recovery time. But I found that it's a little bit more redundant in this particular build, especially if you use inertial to dampeners. So it's a bit of a dark art in using inertial power to dampeners. Um, not everyone favours it, it seems to have fallen out of fashion a bit but um, I use it to great effect. In the Lieutenant Commander slot for the in engineering I'm running Emergency Pad Shields 3. Um, if you look at my current configuration you can see I've actually got one, two, three hull heels not counting Miracle Worker. So on this current build the only meant that I actually only had two hull heels. So this ship is designed to it can lose its shields but it's got more resistances to survive when the shields drop. Uh, but either way I you could swap this out and run engineering team three and the emergency power shields one. It's it's per personal preference we'd want to use there. I've also got a duty officer that reduces the um rate at which this power recharges. And lastly, and if I was flying in the slot cruise during my full commander slot I may actually have um uh, eject warp plasma but on this occasion I favour structural integrity field 3 it makes a very useful heal uh, this heal is actually also affected by auxiliary power and auxiliary power is your friend on most ship builds and as such I've got a few various ways at which I boost my auxiliary levels for example EPS transfer just for one or even my enhanced plasma manifold to boost auxiliary power as well um, something I might consider if I was doing a slightly more supportive heal, I might swap out one of the universes for another engineering officer and perhaps have extend shields for example, but um, this particular build works quite well for me. Hmm. And then over to the science slots, first of all in the Lieutenant Science, I have Hazard Emitters 1 as another hull heal, and as you can see current levels at the moment, Engineering Team 1 is actually me doing 6000 hit points 
and has a team at the moment, or has the mitters, sorry, is doing eight. So, as I said, I tend to favour has the mitters, and if I really need to, I will pop either my EPS manifold or EP. Uh, Enhanced plasma manifold, sorry, or the EPS power transfer, so increase my auxiliary levels than you use the abilities to use aux level. And lastly, in the lieutenant slot, I've got transfer shield strength 2. Again, this is affected by your auxiliary power level, so the more auxiliary power you're running, as in the higher the setting, the more bonus you're going to get out of this. This ability basically is another way of regenerating your shields, but also gives you. Um, <coughs> reduction in damage to those shields and at the moment I'm getting a 12.2% reduction in damage when this power is active for 15 seconds. Now this will change for example if I pop a battery and increase my ox level. It might be useful just to see that at the moment so if I just let you have a look at transfer shield strength numbers, has the emitters and if it wants to pop up, auxiliary structure integrity and then lastly so you can see what the settings are at the moment. So if I use my... <laughs> settings pretty much where they are uh, as you can see I currently run 123 on my weapons which I can't complain about 62 on my shields with 59 on my engines and 62 again on auxiliary power level so for example if I was in a hurry I could pop I'm getting one heck of a bonus to my shields my shield power is now up to 100 and my auxiliary power is also at 100 so, useful little console slot that comes with the Oberth class starship, and it's slowly working its way into well, most of my Federation ship builds because it's a lovely way of getting a bonus there. And last but no means least, you've got the old polarized the hull, which is basically immunity to tractor beams and teleports. And also, if my shields do go down, and you can notice there my ox levels are going down, so the bonuses you'll get from polarized the hull just went down. But it gives me a heck of a defense there to my hull, so any damage I'm taking it's basically giving me a resistance to it, so it's going to do less damage to me. Very useful, especially if you're up against the Borg and STFs. Polarized the hull is definitely your friend, as is the Tap Hat and Omega. So, one to remember there. Hmm. Now, that's pretty much my bridge officers and how I use my current build. And as I swap these out occasionally, depending. Uh, left tank. Lander usually gets swapped out for another tactical officer, and I may rotate these around a little bit. Sometimes I might want to drop Omega, maybe use Fire at Will 3, and just swap over the penalties. But this is pretty much what my default set of power tray is for my bridge officers. Something also to consider is I've actually got two Surians uh, one in the Lieutenant Tactical, and another one in Lieutenant Science. And if I bring up their information, you'll actually see why. It's actually for the passive abilities. On my ship, uh, basically I get efficient. So I get a plus 7.5 to my Starship Warp Core efficiency. And what that basically means for those that don't know. And if I... Efficiency is basically a skill that improves all your ship's power levels. So on this occasion, the lower I have my power settings, uh, the greater the bonus and sometimes as I do swap and change my power levels out a bit sometimes especially when I'm flying a different ship I want to get a bonus to those abilities now some people might be tempted to put them more maybe in what core potential that gives you a flat bonus yeah, you could go either way really but with my current power level I'm basically anything below 75 you get a bonus so at the moment these power levels at the moment are better than I can't complain about that. It's basically a pretty much an all-rounder. One of the advantages of being an engineer is the bonuses to your power levels. Okay, I suppose we better move on to the duty officers. Uh, on here, these are the current bridge officers that I use. I do rotate these round 
but the majority of these are sort of my key abilities. The energy weapons officer does actually swap in and out a little bit, and on a different build when I'm flying a regent, I might I not uncommon for me to drop the energy weapons officer and throw in their systems engineer for the buff to um, using DEM, the direct energy modulation. And hopefully, if I've yep, I've got him here. And you can see this one gets swapped out in and out depending if I'm using DEM on my region class. And as you can see, they get a plus 200 resistance to weapon system energy drain for 8 seconds. So, combine this with manual inversion, you can see the bonuses are starting to stack up there. 169.2 resistance to power drain on all systems, and a plus 200 resistance drain to weapon systems. So basically, the higher you keep your weapon power, the more damage you're going to do. So, if you're running high beam arrays, and... You will notice a heck of a drain on your weapon power, especially if you use beam overload, for example, whichever version you favour. Your weapon power will be drastically reduced. This duty officer is an example of one officer that actually does work and can actually help you reduce that drain, especially if you're a tactical officer. Uh, although using tacticals will run their weapons pretty high and pretty much use cannons, they don't take quite as much power from the weapon system. They don't drain as much, but. Um, if you happen to use, say, Beam Overlay 3, like I've come across with some Birds of Prey, and I've been hit by Tractor Beam, Beam Overlay 3 in high yield, um, believe you me, my shields have crumbled and I have fallen foul to one heck of an alpha attack. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Back to matters in hand. Um, the energy weapons officer I've got at the moment is on your blue. Um, I keep meaning to get a purple, but I haven't quite got around to it yet. Uh, this one basically gives you a chance to reduce the beam attacks other than subsystem targeting. So if you're using subsystem targeting you want to reduce the cooldown on that, you'll want to use the other energy weapons offset. This one basically gives me a reduction on fire at will or beam overload. And on this occasion I get a 50% chance of reducing the remaining recharge time by 7.5. So basically it's a percentage chance of reducing the time at which this power is going to come back. So basically it comes up quicker. And obviously the more of these officers you've got slotted, the better the bonuses are going to be. Hmm? Obviously, I, I, because I'm running a cruiser and engineer, I tend to run slightly more on the defensive side rather than on the offensive side, which you'll see. So that's the energy weapons officer. Uh, I've also got a purple con officer slotted in at the moment, and as you can see, this one gives me basically reduces tactical team by eight seconds. So it reduces the time which tactical team comes up. Some people might prefer to run two of these. I am you on one of these. Seems it works pretty well for me because I'm a cruise and I run a higher ox level than most escorts. For example, I can use uh, transfer shield strength to bring my shields up more, and emergency power to shields three as well. So, use the little con officer there. I, I think everyone uses it here and there within the duty officers. Okay, moving on to the engineering department. A uh, slightly different one. I don't know how many people do this, but I prefer to run the exo comp. And this one gives me bonuses to what batteries I use. So as you can see here, basically, for example, if I use a weapons battery, I get a 10% increase to my damage for 10 seconds. If you use a shield battery, you get a resistance on your shields for 10 by 10% for 10 seconds. Those of you lucky enough to pre-order and get the red master capacitor, and I envy you all, you get an increase to all power by 5 for 10 seconds. If you're running auxiliary power battery, you get an increase to your sensors. Uh, if you're running an engineering engine battery, sorry, you get a bonus to inertial dampeners by 10 for 10 seconds. And if you're running an uh, oxidative battery, you also get a stealth, increase your stealth by 10. Useful little one, this one. I use it mainly because it just does little extra little bits of defenses. So you can see if I hover over my plasma manifold, basically I get a bonus to my shields and to my ox level for example when I use it. If I use a weapons battery one for example I get a bonus to my damage. So if I pop one I get a bit of an increase in my damage which is always useful. And if I'm running a shield battery it obviously gives me resistance to damage. So useful little exo comp for that one. Not for everyone but I actually find it really useful. It could be swapped out for other things as well and it's not uncommon the case I swap it out but mainly as I said my energy weapons obviously get swapped out more than the exo comp. Then got a maintenance officer in here. Uh, main reason for this is basically just to uh, reduce my engineering time 
by 8 seconds. This is mainly because I run tactical team and engineering team. So if I pop engineering team, I'm going to knock to the small figure off that to bring it up quicker. And then obviously the cooldown of tactical team is just a standard cooldown. But again, useful little power that. That's uh, definitely useful having. Hmm? And then last but by no means least, I've got a damage control engineer for space. And uh, basically this uh, is a chance to, basically a 35% chance to reduce the recharge time for emergency pad shields by th by 30%. So basically when I hit emergency pad shields, there's a possibility it'll actually reduce the cooldown for that. Now as a, if I had more of these slotted, the chance would, in, I'd actually get a better chance of uh, emergency pad shields 3 coming up quicker. But because I run transfer shield strength, I've got shield batteries if I need them to boost power, and I've got the EPS plasma manifold, and even EPS transfer. So I've got various ways of increasing shield power, so I can get my shields to recharge pretty quickly. So on my occasion, I only use one. So that's my slot out really for my duty officers. That's how I have them set up. Um, I hope this video is uh, giving you a little glimpse of how I build my operations Odyssey and uh, gives you some ideas about how you want to build yours. There'll be one more part to this set, this little series. In the last part, I'll discuss my build spec for my particular engineering tune and why I picked what I picked for him. Okay, so I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Goodbye. Hmm?